Welcome back to another Space Gas tutorial video. In the previous video, we showed how to input and mesh the slabs modeled as plates in a two-storied building frame. We also showed how to offset the beams and slabs to properly align them with each other. In today's video, we will apply some loads, analyze the model and view the results. We will now apply some pressure loads to the slabs by first selecting them, clicking the right mouse button and then choosing Pressure Loads. We are going to apply the same pressure to each plate and so we will tick the Apply Loads to the selected plates as a group option so that we only have to type the load in once. We can choose between local loads that are aligned with the plates or global loads that are aligned with the global axis. In this case, we will choose global projected loads that are calculated based on the projected area of the plates acting in the negative y-axis direction. We will also apply some node loads to simulate concentrated loads on the slab. To make it easier to select the nodes, we will temporarily hide the plates first by clicking the plates button on the side toolbar and then input the node loads. For simplicity, we will put the node loads in the same load case as the slab pressures and give them all the same magnitude. Note that if the desired location of a concentrated load does not coincide with a node, then we could either move a node that is nearby or perform further plate meshing to create a node at the desired location. Finally, we will apply self-weight, again, for simplicity, in the same load case as the other loads. Now that the model is complete, we can analyze it and show the results in various ways. We could show deflections by clicking the deflections button on the side toolbar. with or without annotation. Or we could click on any nodes to display their deflection values. Similarly, we could click on members to show their forces and moments or plates to show their forces, moments and stresses. Alternatively, we could produce various plate contour diagrams by clicking the contour button on the side toolbar. Let's look at the X-direct stresses. To see the stresses underneath, we can rotate the model. Keep in mind that you can't compare the stresses in different elements or produce sensible smoothed contour diagrams if the elements have their local axes all pointing in different directions. If you have this situation, you can use the Align Plate Axis tool to line up the local axes of all your plates. This is demonstrated in another video. We can adjust the contour diagram settings by clicking on the Contour Preferences option under the drop-down menu of the Contour button. To find out more about the inputs in the Contour Preferences form, you can click the Help button. Now let's have a look at the Von Mises Stress Diagram. Incidentally, the Von Mises Stress is a combination of the principal stresses and is often compared to the yield stress of the material to see if failure has occurred. This time, you will notice that a portion of the diagram is green, and you can see from the contour legend that in this case, green covers a range of stresses from approximately 0.6 up to 1.2. If we want to see more detail in this range of stresses, we can effectively zoom in by reselecting the diagram, and this time, requesting the range of stresses between 0.6 and 1.2. Now you can see that there is a lot more detail shown.
Of course, now all the stresses greater than 1.2 or less than 0.6 are just shown as red or blue. Finally, we can produce reports of the plate forces, moments and stresses as usual. In the next video, we will look at using plate elements to model a circular steel tank.